by changing your daily habits. You change it by creating a lifestyle of the way you want to live your life, how you show up, living with passion, putting soul into everything you do, you know, treating everybody fairly and nicely and being considerate, being a good friend. And like I said last time I spoke, how you do anything is how you do everything. Lasting change happens by changing, taking the bits of information and advice you've got from the multiple thought leaders that Pete has put in front of you and saying, you know, not trusting what they say, but trying it and saying what resonates, what works, and you keep what works as part of your routines and you discard the stuff that doesn't because there's no one size fits all. So as you go through the remaining speakers and the last part of the conference, I think it's really important that you have an open mind and you're willing to try some of the principles and things that, you, that, have, been, that have been said and discussed. Because I wanna say this, before there was fancy marketing, there was common sense. And whatever it hits you, whatever people, speakers resonate with you, you wanna follow them, you wanna gravitate, you wanna try what they're saying. That's how I built my career. I'm 51 years old and I observe. When I started out speaking, I went, the first time I spoke, I was in front of a room of 40 people. They gave me a microphone. They said, no, they didn't give me a microphone. They said, speak loudly and slowly, good luck. And I was really nervous. And you know that has escalated, but I took, a, I took a step into this arena. I started watching people I admire, how they, their gestures, this and that. I started applying it, weeding out what works and what doesn't work. And that's how you build a lifestyle. What are the habits that are sticky? And before I get into today's, to today's spiel, which I'm about to do in a minute, I just wanted to say during this really uncertain time, those habits and routines are really important to establish. And there's a balance. The balance between survival mode, which many people are in right now, and, and a feeling of feeling accomplished. The one thing we all share is we want to come out of this unique period of time, this quarantine, feeling somewhat accomplished, but balancing that with it's okay that I'm not teaching my kids Mandarin right now because I have so much going on. Balancing all that is really important. So a very simple strategy that I used, actionable takeaways, is I made a list of things that I would love to do during the day. I call them my daily vitamins. Things like I would love to play sports with my kids. I would love to take a cold plunge. I want to do breathing. I want to spend 20 minutes talking to my wife. I want to exercise. I made a list of about seven or eight things that I would want to do. Those are my vitamins. And every day, very simple, even beyond the quarantine, I try to take three or four vitamins every day. Because no matter what, chaos, confusion, loss, loss of job or whatever, I still try to prioritize myself. So I just wanted to share that because it was a thought that I had earlier today. Someone asked me about my routines. I'm, I'm very aware of them. I'm very aware of making sure I prioritize myself and take my daily vitamins every single day. I'm the last speaker of the day, and I want to share a story with you guys about closing. I think a lot of people talk about how to start a business, how to start a venture, how to get a job, but there's not a lot of talk about how to finish. And when I was running a, I trained for a hundred mile race when, about 13 years ago. Um, and I got to mile 99, I had 50 friends that were with me. And in my head, I had, I had pre-imagined this amazing Rocky moment where all 50 of my friends are gonna run the last mile with chariots of fire playing. And I'm gonna cross the finish line and they're gonna hoist me up and it's gonna be this magical moment that I had for the rest of my life. When I got to mile 83, they told me I was actually at mile 82. Either they were wrong or I was wrong, but they had the official scorecard. So in my head, I had over, I would ran one more mile than I thought than, than they thought I had. So when I got to mile 99, my brain was like, you're at 100, you're done. That's what I programmed my brain to do, and I shut down. So the last mile took me 48 minutes to complete. My 89-year-old mom could, could walk a mile in 48 minutes, literally. It took me, I just couldn't move, I shut down. In fact, the last quarter of a mile, I had my, my brother and my, my close friend literally holding me up, and I hobbled through the finish line, 
And when I was about a quarter of a mile away, a guy ran by me, stopped, looked me in the eye and said, hey man, finish like a champion. Finish like a champion. And I didn't. I hobbled in, holding on to my friends. And <clears throat> I regretted that moment for 13 years. I couldn't get it back. I didn't even understand it then. I was so immature. I didn't understand it. And fortunately, I had a chance 13 years later to repeat a 100-mile run and, and get redemption and finish strong. But it's so important in our journeys that we follow through and we finish like champions. I don't play nine-inning games. I play a 10-inning game. Everybody else plays nine-inning games. In business, with my friends, my follow-through, there's always an extra inning. When this is done, I'm going to send, send Pete a big thank you. He thinks it's done for the opportunity to meet all these people, to share some of the, some of my journey with everybody. That's a 10-inning game. It's not just an email. There's a thank you. Six months from now, I'm going to send them another thank you. Pete, <clears throat> just reflecting on this amazing opportunity, I play a 10-inning game. Whatever you guys are in, in your journey, just remember this. Starting is so important as an entrepreneur, starting the process. But how you close, how you finish, finishing like a champion is, the, is as equally important. Lance Armstrong shared this story with me on his podcast. Uh, I did a podcast with him and he was telling me, regardless of political opinions or Lance or this or that, but he shared this story and it's so compelling. He told me that he was in one of the legs of the Tour de France and he had a communication with his coaches through a device that he could talk and they could, he could listen and talk to them. And he was having a really tough day and he wanted to quit. And his coach was just sensing it from being in tune with Lance. And he said, Lance, whatever you do, man, don't get off the bike. Whatever you do, keep pedaling and stay on the bike. Because once you get off the bike, it's over, man. Once you quit, I'm done. It's over. You don't get another chance. Wherever you are on your journey during this incredibly difficult time, do not get off the bike. Do not get off your bike. Just keep going. The people that didn't finish the 100-mile race at mile 38 when they had blisters like I did, I had seven toenails floating around in my shoe at one point. I don't negotiate my goals. I was going to finish this race. The people that thought at mile 38 that they were stuck in this space forever, the pain, the blisters, the toenails, they dropped out. The people that said, if I just keep going forward, regardless of the times and the circumstances, if I just keep moving forward, <clears throat> maybe at mile 40 or 50, I'll feel better. I'm not going to be trapped in this spot forever. My life changed like this. I went from kiddie pool attendant, from selling shrimp and meat door to door to cleaning meat trucks to three years later having a private jet company. I never thought when I was, that did, unbelievable, $5 billion in sales. It was an amazing success. I never thought when I was at the kiddie pool that this was, my, you know, that that was going to be my life forever. I knew I was always one idea away. I knew if I stayed in the game and stayed on the bike and bet on myself and believed in myself. There's your belief, Pete. Believed in myself. Believed that I wouldn't be where I was right now forever. Had the confidence that I could create my own luck and opportunity. And it might not happen tomorrow, but this isn't the life I'm going to have forever. Amazing things are going to happen. I just stayed in the game long enough. My friends that were on the bike with me were like, I don't have it anymore, man. We, we, we have no more money. I'm done. I kept going. That was the only difference. It wasn't smarts, it wasn't connections. It was just, I stayed on the bike. So wherever you guys are in your journey, it's so important to play a 10 inning game, go the extra inning, the extra yard, do more, believe that you can do it and stay on the bike, stay in the game. That's how you finish. I wanna change directions for one second, talk about how you start, okay? Um, a lot of us are probably going to be, many people here will be looking for jobs soon. And I'm super sensitive to that. I've been in that situation. Many people are going to go back to having meetings soon. <clears throat> there is an art form to starting an interview or starting a meeting. And I'm going to teach it to you guys in three minutes. When you go to a meeting, 
and I, I feel like I can talk about this because I've been in 